My name's Phoebe and I have some great updates to share with you with selection and like simulation and how you can select better and more advanced all within Clo in our updated version of 2025.0. So let's dive on in and have some fun while we learn. All right, so here I've got a garment. She's looking pretty boss-like and also super cool. Very fierce, we're ready for this. Now, we are gonna go through first how this selection advanced like pinching option works, where to find it, and then we'll go through some workflows on how you could best use it in your everyday life. So first, let's just talk about where is this tool, right? This tool can only be found when you have simulation on. So I first have to turn on simulation. Now it can be simulation as CPU or GPU. I want to do GPU. If you're on a Mac, you don't have GPU. You just have CPU, just as a reminder. So I'm going to hit my spacebar to turn on simulation. Now that I have this turned on, I can now access that new um, selection option. So I can go to my tool here and just as a reminder, anytime you see a little like triangle next to a tool, that means there's more options underneath it. So you can always click and hold and find out what other options there are. Here we have advanced pinching. So now a pop-up is going to come up and there's going to be some options of what you can do. And we are going to walk through all of these. But just as a reminder, this is how you get to it. You have to turn on simulation, you then click and hold down and you select advanced pinching on your selection tool. If I turn off simulation, the options will go away. I can turn simulation back on and then it will automatically show up again. So first off, when you hover over your pattern pieces or garments or anything like that, you're going to see some um, circles here. This will show you like what you're selecting and everything just so you know we're going to get into more of like what the inner circle means what the outer circle means in a second but first let's just go through what advanced pinch settings are so first off we have fall off shape bump now you're, you might be like what the bump just means this graph and how you can see it so it's bump or linear and you'll see it here right so linear or bump. Okay, the graph will change. Linear, click and hold. It always looks better if you display weight. Linear, bump. It's very, very similar. The biggest difference you'll see is within this graph. I like bump. Then you have fall off distance and fall off power. Fall off distance has to do with the outer circle. So the smaller you go, the smaller the selection amount will be. See how much smaller that is? The higher you go, the higher the selection amount will, amount will be. So this is the outer circle amount. So if I make this much smaller, I can then select a smaller section of my patterns and that will be nice. Now the next part that we're going to go over is the inner circle, fall off power. So the fall off power is deciding how big you want that inner circle to be because the inner circle is like the most powerful selection part. So if you want there to be a lot of selection and you want like your selection as like the majority of what you click to be like truly hardcore selected, then you'll probably lower it so that you don't have a lot of fall off. If you want a lot of fall off, then maybe you'll make it higher so that your like harsh selection is much smaller than everything else. So just to make, just to help you understand, the um, green is showing you what like truly is selected. Well, you can see like I have a full area to select, but I'm truly just selecting this bit that's moving and the rest is kind of just fall off area. 
if I lower this and then click, you can see like a lot more of it is gonna get selected and like moved and everything. And it's not gonna be a fall off area. It's just gonna be like truly selected and I can move it around and adjust. So that's fall off distance, fall off power. Big circle, little circle, how much you want like it to, you want like the space between your selection and the outer circle to like just follow what you selected and how much you want like that to be controlled by what you're, how you're moving it. The next part we have, and this is just the graph to help you like see what's going on, right? It also helps a lot when you just click and then you see it there. The next part is how you're going to select things, okay? This is really helpful because the first thing you have is distance measured. So surface or straight. So what the what is the difference, you might ask? Okay, so surface is basically following along with the pattern surface of what you're selecting and selecting that. So you can kind of see with pattern surface, the distance is mainly like the surface of the pattern. So this top part isn't getting selected as you can see. But if they're sewn together, like these two pieces are, then it will select those two because it see, can read its surface. But like this pattern piece, right? Is like this pattern on top is literally like above it. So it's not going to read that surface part of it, even if like it's, it looks like it should right if you want like just a straight like selection that's when you would use straight and then you can see here like it's just selecting anything in its distance it does not matter like if it's a different surface level it doesn't matter if it's sewn or not it will select anything within the distance but you can see if i have surface on and if i select like right here this all is getting selected because everything here is being sewn together but like this edge isn't sewn to this edge so it's reading like there's a different surface here but because this panel is sewn here this edge is sewn here and this is a fake pocket all of this is going to be selected through surface but if i wanted this section to even be selected when i just selected this pattern then i would use straight so that all of this moves together Even the bottom part is getting moved, as you can see, right? So even here is getting moved because it's reading the whole area right here. Anything that is in this parameter of selection should be moved, all of it. But this one is saying, no, like probably just what the surface of what the pattern is selected, of the pattern you selected should be moved. Maybe not below, maybe not above should be moved if that helps make sense. All the straight is just like, nope, like we're gonna just straight select everything that is in this circle's space. It doesn't matter if it's below it, doesn't matter if it's above it, it will just like select all of it and move it. And this one's like, no, I'm gonna read like what the surface around it is. If it's sewn together, then yes, it should move. If it's like above it, maybe it shouldn't. If it's below it and it's not attached at all, then maybe it shouldn't. And so then it's like a little bit of a smarter selection and movement, as you can see. Next, you can see distance indicator. That basically is these two circles you're seeing. I would always suggest to have it on. If you don't have it, then you can just move this around. Then you also have limit to selected patterns. So this could mean when you say limit to selected pattern, it means like only the pattern that's selected will be moved and will also be selected as you can see so if i didn't have this on and i clicked here you can see like more things are moving right since i do have this on and i click here only this is being selected right same with here only this is being selected so you can see how like limit to selected patterns could be really helpful if you just want to like move a little piece or anything like that then displayed weights, that's the green that you keep seeing. If I uncheck this, then you won't see that green part. So that 
is how this works, okay? That is the breakdown of all of your options and how you can do it all. Let's talk about now like workflows and when this would be helpful. Okay, so a really simple way in which this could be helpful. Here I have kind of a twist top and you probably can't see this right now, but there's a little hole in the middle and there's this is supposed to go through that hole. There's a hole in the hole. So right now, if I wanted to do this without like any help from advanced selection or anything like that, it I would use my pins, right? And then I would have to go through, find the hole and like really figure this out. It'd kind of be annoying. It wouldn't kind of, it would be annoying. Okay. But now I have se advanced selection and I don't really have to do that now. So now what I can just do is I can turn on my simulation, go into advanced pinching, limit to select a pattern. I'm going to make this smaller. Now I'm going to select this and just move this through. Pretty cool, right? Like that was so much easier, like crazy easier. Another way that this can be really helpful is with eyes. Okay. This is, um, Okay, so here I have this tied, but I want to knot it one more time. Again, before I would definitely need to use pins and like that would really help me out. But now what I can do is use my selection. And you can see how easily I can now tie this knot really simply by like being able to switch back and forth between my pins and also now my like advanced pinching tool and how now I'm able to like grab a bigger amount, move it and adjust it a lot easier and like have more control over that adjustment. What's also really nice here is styling. So now I can start to like tuck in certain parts of this shirt into the jeans really quickly and easily because I can select just limit to selected pattern. I can move different parts of this around really easily because of the limit to selected pattern option. And I can really style this a lot easier and a lot faster than ever before. And what's also a really great addition is if I'm about to fit something and it's kind of like sitting a little bit incorrectly, I can use this tool to easily move it quickly and like a lot of area to adjust and move it to the right positions that it needs to be like I'm doing right now. So lots of cool ways in which this can work into your workflow really quickly and easily and improve it very quickly. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, use the drop down, use the comment section down below and a clothes designer will get back to you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also check out the YouTube channel. We've got so many great videos for you to watch and see. Thanks again so much and keep having fun in clothes.